Within the last week or two, a lot of YouTube channels, whether they be a small YouTube channel, a medium size, or a great big huge YouTube channel, they've all been noticing and talking about basically the same thing. And what is the same thing that everybody's talking about in particular? Well, it happens to be the YouTube glitch. Now, what is the YouTube glitch? Maybe you've never heard anything about it, or maybe you've clicked on this video to find out a little bit more about what this YouTube glitch is and what is exactly behind it. Now, the YouTube glitch is basically this. People are losing subscribers each time that they upload a video. When their video is uploading, they notice that their real-time subscriber count decreases even before the video is fully uploaded and available to the general public on their channel. Also, another thing that a lot of people have noticed is that they have been losing month by month by month this year the amount of views that they were used to. From 2015 to now in 2016, the amount of views that they had that were up here are way down here. For some people, it was in the millions. Now it's the hundreds of thousands. For the people that had hundreds of thousands, it's in the hundreds now. That's what's happening. But is it all a YouTube glitch? That's what I'm here to talk about today. Now, I've done a lot of research on this. I have watched hours of video of people actually trying to explain what their thought and their theory is on the YouTube glitch. Uh, also, what changes in algorithms have taken place for YouTube over the past few years. Let's actually start and talk base first about the algorithms of YouTube. It used to be this. The algorithm for YouTube actually, for your channel to be, or for your YouTube video to be in a recommended tab, for your YouTube video to appear next to somebody else's video while it was playing or at the end of their video as another recommended video for you to click on. It used to be this. It used to go by views, basically views and tags. Then YouTube said, okay, that's not really right. Let's go by views, tags, the title, and the description. They all have to go hand in hand. And what I mean by that is that they would make your search relevancy, your SEO, you would become pretty much a top video that could be viewed on the top of a YouTube search page or recommended tab based on your amount of views, based on what you put in your description as far as keywords went, what you put in your title as far as keywords went, that a lot of people were actually searching for, and what you put in your tags. Then they said, okay, well, views people can auto cheat views. They can have robots uh, create these views for them. So let's kind of switch it up a little bit more. And what they did is they went by real viewer watch time. That's kind of the state that we're in now. And really, that's when a lot of YouTube, big YouTube channels, small YouTube channels, medium-sized YouTube YouTube channels, that's when they started losing the relevancy. That's when they lost that SEO side of things or they lost that part where they were on the top of YouTube searches or YouTube recommendations. They would always be on the side because you know what? They still continued the same thing. When YouTube changed that algorithm in the middle of 2015, well, it didn't matter the quality of the content really so much. But now it kind of does. You've got to increase that viewer engagement, okay? That's that's basically what I'm saying here. If you don't have that viewer engagement throughout your whole video or at the beginning of your video that makes a person want to watch to the middle or to the end to see what happens next, you're in trouble. If you are relying on YouTube to make your video a recommended video, based on your old tags and your old description, but not really having a very quality video, you're screwed. I didn't realize that until now, until people really started talking about this. Actually, before this even happened, about three weeks ago, I had, this was actually within the last month. Within the last month, I had noticed that my views had dropped substantially. 
I noticed that my subscribers were kind of like stalemated and staying the same. One day, I'd have an increase of subscribers, then I'd be back down to like the same number that I was before, or like lower even. And I was thinking, what the heck is going on? I contacted YouTube about it. YouTube says, well, you know what? Well, we do these purges basically, and we try to get rid of the subscribers that are not real subscribers. They might be bots or they might be subscribers that uh, or, or YouTube channels that aren't creating content or they're not active at all anymore. So I get that. They delete those, they purge them, that's it. A lot of people are wondering if it's something that they've done to affect their subscribers. Well, their true subscribers are staying but they're not really gaining other subscribers. Why are they not gaining other subscribers? Well, then that's when you really gotta take a look at yourself and the type of content it is that you are creating. I admittedly got very stale and very lazy in the quality of content that I've been producing. I got very comfortable in the quality of content that I was producing. I stopped doing all the face cams and I stopped doing the songs and I stopped doing the skits and I stopped doing this and that and now it's driving me crazy and I wish I would have kept on that same path. You gotta be a trendsetter. Keep in mind this, YouTube is a business. They're a business first, okay? YouTube's gonna promote certain things. Back in 2013, 2014, 2015 even, PewDiePie was the jam. Everybody watched PewDiePie. PewDiePie watched himself grow into the biggest YouTuber that there is. He still is to this day. But even him himself is noticing that he's lost the amount of subscribers that he's gaining a month, the amount of views that he was getting a month per day even. And a lot of bigger YouTubers are noticing the same exact thing. But there's one thing that a lot of people forget or they seem to forget that trends and certain things change like the wind or they change by the month or they change by the year, but they can happen in the blink of an eye, which is what happened basically this year. Now, back to YouTube being a business. YouTube realized that gaming was a big thing. It was very popular. It was one of their most viewed platforms and genres on their business, on, on YouTube, okay? So that's what got promoted. You saw all kinds of gaming channels get promoted because they produced quality and fun content. But at some point in time, that interest and that viewership started to change. People started to watch other content. And that's where other creators became a little bit more relevant. Let's say before gaming, there was tech or there was animators. They were the popular ones. But the thing was, is that these tech channels or that these animators, they could only produce videos every once in a while. An animator especially, they could only create a video maybe once a week or once every few days because it took them so much time to animate the video that they were trying to make for YouTube. For a tech channel, if they had only so much that they could talk about, about their techie geekiness that was going on or so many different products that they could review within a certain amount of time. And eventually it gets kind of boring and it gets kind of stale. Well, it's the same thing that kind of happened with gaming, but it kind of had a little bit more of a staying power. It's one of those things that kind of change with time as well. And it can still remain entertaining, but it has to evolve. There has to be a trend setting point. People have to change and they have to grow with the times and they have to also change their content fast forward now to 2016 again where it is the year basically of leafy is here where all the news channels really grew and they saw substantial subscriber and viewership growth youtube saw that as a big thing that's the type of videos that they started promoting that's the type of videos that were being watched that's where the advertisements went that's where their main focus went 
but a lot of people started really getting sick and fed up with all the bullying and all the nonsense and the bad words and it really became a bad outcry. YouTube saw that. They stopped promoting these guys. These guys are now losing views by the hundreds of thousands and the millions and they are losing subscribers by the day. We're going to take a quick check at all the analytics right quick here in just a second. But I wanted to get this point across. YouTube's a business. They have to change from day to day. They have to be successful for them to earn money and to earn advertisements and to gain revenue. They have to change just like we have to change. They have to adapt just like we have to adapt. They have to trend just like we have to trend to be successful. And that's what they're in the business of doing. And people forget that. They become comfortable with what they have and what they're doing, and they do not embrace the change. I am a victim of that myself. I've been doing that. I became so reliant. I don't know how many times I've said this before. I became reliant on Disney Infinity. What happened this year in May of 2016? Disney decided to completely cancel a game that I pretty much centered my channel around. And then I had to try something different. And then I kept on trying something different. But then I became comfortable again, or I didn't know what the heck I was doing, and I didn't go on the right track. I completely lost my mind of what exactly what YouTube was all about in the first place. It's about creativity. That's what it's about. People want to see new things. They want to see you experience something different and do something new that they haven't seen before. Reach outside of that box and be creative and entertaining all at the same time. For some people, it can't really be done. Unfortunately, you get stuck in this box and you can't move outside of it. But hopefully, most of you are able to actually get outside of that box. For some people, it's going to work for it. They're going to continue to gain subscribers, okay? But for the most part, you have to change with the times. And you have to constantly make sure that you are keeping up with the times as well. And talk about those subjects that are relevant. That's all there is to it. Let's take a look at some of my favorite channels and see exactly what's happening. Right now, we're at my good friend PDDT Sports Cards actual social blade. And let's take a quick look at this. Look at this graph. It goes down, then back up and stays up until around 2015 and then goes down. Everybody that you are about to see within the next one, two, three, four, five, five pages right here. Within these next five pages, you're going to see basically the same type of graph where it goes up, 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 and then down. Uh, mid-2015, early to mid-2015, when YouTube changed their algorithm a little bit to more watch time than it was for views or uh, keywords or search and all that, to more watch time as far as what gets recommended and what gets seen from a lot of other YouTubers. So it goes down 2015. Same with the subscribers. They kind of go hand in hand. The more views you get, the more subscribers you end up actually reaching out to or the more other YouTube creators or watchers that you reach out to. Let's take a look at my page as well. Now let's go down over here. Boom, start going up, go down. That's when I lost my channel for about two months. I actually gained it back, started getting my views again. Boom, boom, boom. Now my views are starting to go back down into the hundreds of thousands. And probably this next month, I'll probably be low 100,000 views, which is like a first for me in a while. Same with subscribers. Went way up, then way down. 2015. This all happened right around the time that YouTube was changing their algorithm, which suggests this as well. YouTube's changing their algorithm again. What it's going to be? We're not exactly quite sure, but I can guarantee you this. The YouTube algorithm is getting smarter and smarter the more that they update it and change things. It's becoming a thing where you can't really fool it a whole lot, okay? Let's, let's put it like, like that, where you used to be able to, to really fool it. CoinOp TV started millions of views, you know, all the way to 2015. And then it just goes down. Same thing with the subscribers. Just goes down big time. It hurts. It makes you have a stroke to your ego and to your confidence. And it makes you really start to question what it is that you're doing. Then it starts affecting the quality of your videos. It affects the quantity of your videos, how much you want to upload and do things. It's tough. It makes you really 
start to ask questions that you normally wouldn't question. Cinnamon Toast Kin, he just did a video about the YouTube subscriber and view glitch. His views and his, his views per month, way up, 2015. Right around that time that the algorithm changes, it goes way down. Same thing right here. I don't really think it's so much the glitch, it's the algorithm that changed YouTube and people didn't catch on to it. That's what happened. That algorithm changed, and once that algorithm changed, that whole thing where they switched to how many minutes your videos are watched for, that is when people really started seeing the loss. And now they're really starting to wonder what the heck, because you know, this is what happens. In January, you start to see, okay, December, you see that increase again. People were used to that, that yearly cycle. January through June, you're not going to make really as much money because the advertisements aren't really there. People start really advertising right around October through, let's say, January, through Super Bowl, uh, the beginning of February. But then after that first week of February, then the advertising amounts and revenues stop because there's not as many advertisements that are put out there for YouTubers. So they can't make as much money, okay? Same thing with Corey Kinchin right here. Actually, this is where it actually really changes. Corey Kinchin didn't start growing until 2015. He had a few dips, but he continued to grow. He's got an upward path. Same thing with his subscribers. Just keeps on going up and up and up. It doesn't really go down. Yes, it has its snags in the road, and there are reasons why it ends up having its snags in the road and big dips. Part of it could be due to a little bit of a glitch and change in algorithms, but you want to know what this is. These guys that are getting more and more subscribers and more and more views are creating engaging content that has that watch time and that, that viewership watching there. People watch their videos from start to finish because it's good, plain and simple. That's all there is to it. They don't create a video that's going to be boring. I hate to say that. I hate to say that it's happened to myself. I've done it to myself even. I've created videos that got boring. If I watch some of my videos that I've created within this last year or two, I got so much into a comfort zone. So much. With the exception of live streams. I do like the live streams because you can interact with your fans and your subscribers. They like that in return. And also, you can do different things. It's a real-time it's a real time thing. So, number one, guys, try, li try more live streams. People appreciate that, and they will watch your content more. And your view, your view time for those videos will be greater. It will help increase your view time. That's what's helped increase my view time over the last month or so, is I've done a little bit more of the live streaming. Now, let's check Jack, where are we at? FGTV. Again, a big time increase again in the viewership. It keeps on going up. It doesn't really drop a whole lot. Same thing with his monthly subscribers. It just keeps on going up. He's creating quality content. He's constantly shifting what he's doing. He's not doing the same video over and over and over again. He's doing something different with different family members and doing different videos and thinking outside of the box. Jack Septicai. Let's go to him next. Same exact thing here. Let's go down to his viewership right here. Month by month his viewership gains and keeps on going up. He doesn't see the big dip that a lot of us other YouTubers are seeing, which we started to blame on a glitch. It's not just the glitch. It was a change in the algorithm and the ability for some of these people to be able to change with what YouTube was a promoting and what YouTube was trying to tell us all along. These guys followed the guidelines to the T. That's what happened. They're the trendsetters. What do they do? They do all kinds of different videos. They cover a broad variety of things. It's not the same thing over and over again. If I was to cover Disney Infinity, it's only going to go for so long. If I was to cover Terraria, it's only going to be 
popular and and to be relevant for so long. If I was to cover Pokemon, it's only going to gain a certain type of viewership. But if I was to cover a broad variety of things and talk about stuff that's trending and make things really exciting for you to want to watch, give it a catchy thumbnail, give it a catchy uh, a catchy title, make the first couple sentences of my description look really nice. That's what people want. And they want an, enga an engaging video. Something that they can relate to. Something that's going to make them think differently or say, hey, I want to try this myself. That's what they want. And that's what they want to see. And that's what's going to increase your viewer time as well. Let's check out now. This was the man of the year right here. Leafy is here. Let's actually, I haven't wanted to really go too much into uh, the actual analytics of what people have lost. But if you look in November of this year, this was a, after people started making the exposing videos of Leafy is here, especially after iDubs did it, he started losing subscribers massively in the numbers. It was crazy. Look at, look at this. He started out at subscribers. Let's, let's go. When did he really start gaining subscribers? Pretty much doubling them. Um, it looks like right around... Uh, October of 2014 he started really really gaining them and gaining them and then he really started going up this year 2016 let's say actually it looks like right around the July July of 2015 is when his channel really started getting recognized that's when a lot of people started losing their views they started losing the uh, their subscribers. That's when YouTube realized the shift in what people were watching. Do you understand what I'm saying? This this is where the business model changed a little bit. So they started promoting Leafy. They started promoting his videos, but the second that people really started getting sick of Leafy and started exposing him and stopped watching his videos and putting the dislikes on it and started to watch something else that was trending. Boom. Dropped. Flatlined. Dead. He can't get nowhere near the amount of views that he was getting. 35.64 million views is what he received as opposed to in July of this year was 121.07 million. It changes. It's changing again. What is it changing back to? I don't know exactly what the trend is going to be next. Is it going to be people that are the family gaming type? Is it going to be people that speak the truth and speak their mind and are very helpful? I don't know. Nobody really knows what the next trending thing is going to be. But I can guarantee you that YouTube is going to be there promoting it. So watch out for what YouTube is promoting next. What type of videos are relevant in your search right now? What are you seeing as the recommended on your homepage? What are you seeing in the trending topics? That's what you need to start focusing on when you do your videos. And create a story for everybody to see. And be a trendsetter. That's what you need to do. But... Leafy, poor Leafy, he lost those subscribers fast. He lost those views fast. His channel is not going to go up anytime soon. It's not. It's going to keep on going down. The amount of subs that he gets is going to keep on going down. You think this looks bad? It's going to go. It's going to go worse. Let's talk about Drama Alert, Mr. Keemstar himself. Now he has seen a little bit of a plus, but again, this is what's happening. He saw his peaks, then he saw his drops. This is when Leafy started the all the negativity about Keemstar and Drama Alert. But then he started gaining it back up again, but he's seeing the drops because you know what? It's not that much of a relevant thing anymore. Nobody wants to hear about the social ongoings of other YouTubers. Not as much as they wanted to. It's not the relevant trending thing anymore. But there is something else that is going to be the next trending thing. YouTube already sees it. They're probably already promoting it. And that is what we're starting to see. 
and I guarantee you that those channels that YouTube is promoting right now, the next trending thing, they're gonna see substantial growth. So you gotta stay relevant, guys. That's, that's what I'm telling you is the key to everything, is to stay relevant and set a trend. It's not just about a YouTube glitch. Stop thinking and settling on this YouTube glitch because it's not just a YouTube glitch. It's yourself as a creator, it's your ability to adapt and to change and to set a trend yourself. Can you be the next big thing? You could very well be the next big thing. But you've got to think outside the box and you've got to be willing to change. If you're going to do the same thing over and over again, it's not going to help you. You're going to stay branded in the same thing and people are going to think the same thing about you and eventually they're going to get bored. I get bored of watching the same videos over and over again. You think I'm going to want to watch a Final Fan? I love Final Fantasy. I love video games. I love this and that. But I can't stay in the same video game forever and ever. I'm going to get sick of it. I played Destiny for about a month straight. That's about all that I did. But I got sick of Destiny because I was playing it too much. It happens. People's views and they, they change so much. Just like technology. Do you have the first iPhone anymore? No, you don't have the first iPhone anymore. You've probably got an iPhone 5 or a 6 or a 7. That's what you've got. Because that's how much everything changes. Get that through your head. That's what you got to realize. People and things change all the time. And so do people's interests. And so do the things that trend. It's not because you're not likable anymore. It's not because people don't like you anymore. It's not because you're not creating quality content. It's because you're not creating the engaging content that people want to see in the masses. That's what it is. Set yourself back out to be that trendsetter and guess what? You're going to see that subscriber and that viewership growth again. That's what I'm setting out to do again myself and I guarantee you within this next year or two, it's going to change things massively. What, are you gonna, what can you expect to see from me? You can expect to see much more engaging content. I'm going to be a lot more excited at the start to the end of my videos. Are you gonna see as many videos from me? You're not gonna see five or six or seven or eight or nine or 10 videos. I'm not gonna be the first one that tries to get a certain video out. But you know what I'm gonna do? Is I'm gonna think outside of the box. I'm gonna try new things. If that thing works for a while, yes, I'll make videos and I'll make more videos about it. But am I gonna continue to make only videos about that one particular thing? It's not gonna happen. You're not going to see me stick in that one category or that one genre because we all need to evolve and change. That's what my main purpose of this video is for all of you guys. Wake up and smell the coffee. It's YouTube is a business. YouTube is ever evolving. YouTube is always changing. Yes, there's going to be glitches and there's going to be bugs, but you cannot blame that as the problem. Start looking at it a little bit deeper. Once I started to, it opened up a whole new world of information to me. It really did. That's about all that I can say. That's all that's on my mind right now. Guys, if you stuck to the end of this video, I appreciate it. Don't forget to thumb it up. If you've got anything that you want to add, if you think I've got it all wrong, let me know. Leave it in the comments down below because I would love to hear what your theory and your take is on this whole YouTube glitch, viewer drop, subscriber drop situation that's going on for a lot of YouTubers. But I'm telling you right now that a business is a business and things change. Trends come, they go, and we've all got to learn to adapt and change along with it. Does that mean that I'm going to adapt and change to every single trend? Nope, I'm not going to do that. But I am going to do what it is that I really like to do. If I do see a certain thing trending, I might play my hand in a little bit. I might make a video about this or that a couple of times to keep the engagement there and let people know that I realize that this is what's going on. But I'm also going to be that person that sets a different bar and sets my own trend. That's what you gotta do. Do things that are different, not the same. You continue to do the same thing 
You're going to keep the same people there. You're going to find the new people that also have the same interests. But in the same sense, you're going to affect your ability to grow more. It's just going to be a slow growth, guys. So create that good content. Start doing what you set off to do in the first place. You know, remember that dream that you had at the beginning of your YouTube career? Remember all those goals and ambitions and those really big videos that you put a lot of time and effort into? Start doing those again. Start bouncing different ideas out. If you've got editors for your video, a lot of the big YouTubers have editors for their videos, different editor, editors, not themselves. Change your editors. I'm sorry, but change your editors. Maybe what was really funny to them and to you at that time might not be funny to the relevant crowd and the younger ages that are coming in in the masses now. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's it. That's just me being completely real with the whole situation that's going on right now. That is 100% honesty. Look at yourself again. That's all you got to do. Look at yourself and realize where it is and what has went wrong. And you also have to study the business model that YouTube is putting in place. It might not be set out in words or said, set in stone because it never will be because YouTube doesn't want you to actually know what the secret to success completely is or else everybody would be doing it and then it would just create a big cluster of everything and everybody. So you're never going to know the real algorithm, but you can know what's trending and you can know what YouTube is trying to promote. So go after that or be the trendsetter. Make yourself be the thing that YouTube sees as relevant and do that and go from there. And don't forget to create something that is quality. It doesn't even have to actually concern. It doesn't have to deal with, you don't have to have the best camera. You don't have to have the best microphone. You don't have to have the best editing software. You don't. You just have to be unique and be willing to change with the times. Plain and simple. If you don't, then you're going to find yourself in the same predicament, in the same situation that a lot of us have all found ourselves in. Scratching our heads, scratching our butts, trying to figure out what the heck has went wrong, trying different things all the time to try to figure out what it is that's going to work. When the answer has always been right there in front of us and in front of you. It's to change with the times, to stay up with the trending things, to think outside of the box, and to be entertaining. Don't be some boring blurb that sits here and talks like this. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to tell you exactly what's going on right now. Um... Yeah. Mm -hmm. People don't want to see that. They want to see consistency. They want to see you put your edits in, put your time in, put your quality into your videos. You might have to record for 50 minutes. Shoot, I've been trying to do this video for the last two or three hours. And you're only going to see 20 minutes. 25 minutes basically because I've edited it down or I've restarted the video over and over again because I want it to be the way I would want to see it. The way that I would expect that you would want to see it. I don't want to see a boring video. I want to see something that actually talks to me, speaks to my mind and, and, and gets the point across. Plain and simple guys. If you like the video again, make sure that you thumb it up. It's greatly appreciated. And that's it, guys. Leave some comments down below. Let me know exactly what your thoughts are. I'm sorry for the long rambling. It's I don't ramble this much that often, but I do like to ramble. 
And most of the time they end up going longer than what I actually expect them to. And I end up spending my whole day trying to rack my brain to do this, to actually stay in that mindset because my mind likes to go to five million different places at once. And then I can't get around to what it is that I really want to say and talk about. But that's it. Peace out. And bedazzle. Bam, 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 bam. Wow.